The West was taken aback by the military victories that Japan achieved in 1941 and 1942, a logistics effort that is not frequently appreciated, namely shipping, was the driving force behind those triumphs. At the beginning of the war, the Japanese disregarded any immediate need to support normal trade. In order to provide assistance to the invasion forces, the government dispatched ships that were regularly involved in that endeavor. It took only a short amount of time for this robust fleet of ships to transport a significant number of personnel, supplies, and equipment. They managed to accomplish it within the typical ratio of one person to one square foot. The crowding on board the ship was not something out of the ordinary. Over the course of the first four months of the war, the Japanese army achieved the highest lift capacity it had ever experienced. After the army had achieved its goals, Tokyo retracted a large number of ships in order to transport the raw materials that were obtained from the territories that it had conquered back to Japan. Lift capacity decreased after the initial deployments, with fewer and fewer ships transferring more and more personnel. This occurred after the initial deployments. A total of 14 army divisions, or divisions without flags, were transported by water by the Japanese during the first 13 months of the war. What is even more astounding is the number of lifts, which refers to the number of times a division moved by water after a stoppage, such as disembarking, campaigning, and then embarking for the next goal. Take, for example, the well-traveled 2nd Division, which carried out its journey in three distinct lifts. The division's journey from Japan via Formosa to Karen Bay to Java consisted of a single lift, with the same ships being used throughout. Although the dash to Guadal Canal was a third Maru lift, the Java Robal mission required different ships and was therefore considered a second Maru lift. Consequently, there were two division lifts since the 4th Division traveled from Shanghai to Luzon, where it participated in a campaign and then returned to Japan. From the beginning of 1942 until the end of the year, Japan carried out at least 28 full lifts of divisions or divisions minus with elements, such as a regiment or more, that were temporarily separated. Additionally deployed were independent brigades independent regiments, and other units that were comparable to them, such as independent garrison components. The divisional infantry regiments and tank regiments that were marching independently of the division required transport and cargo space. In Western eyes, tank regiments are more commonly referred to as battalions. About 71 regimental equivalent lifts were accomplished by the Japanese. Due to the fact that these regimental units were of varying sizes, marine transportation was required for the equivalent of 10 additional divisions. When one considers the non-divisional field artillery, engineers, signal, and anti-aircraft units, it becomes clear that an additional 50 major units required 80 lifts, which is comparable to eight departments. The 20th Engineer Regiment, for example, participated in the battle that took place in Hong Kong before sailing to Malaya. The regiment, which was actually a large battalion, was split into two groups because it first conducted a campaign there and then departed for Rangoon. Because the 23rd Independent Engineer Regiment sailed from Korea to Malaya and subsequently from Malaya to Manchuria, it is possible to say that there were two lifts for the regiment. In order to get closer to the battle, Army Air Divisions and Navy Air Flotillas traveled from their bases on December 8, 1941, to several islands. Formoso was the location from which the 5th Air Division provided support for the war in the Philippines. After that, they flew to airfields on Luzon, and then they flew even further south to transport ground support units, weapons, and gasoline ships were utilized. During the activation of the 6th Air Division in late November 1942, it was possible for aircraft to arrive in Raval. However, everything else arrived by sea. There were also elements that moved by water, including anti-aircraft, intelligence, signal, maintenance, engineering, administration, and transportation. 
All of these units were part of the air division. In the same vein, naval air flotillas were also active. It was the 21st Air Flotilla on Formosa, the new 25th that activated on truck, and the new 26th that activated in Japan that initially provided support for these aircraft. In three instances, these aircraft initially received assistance from pre-war sites. When they moved, it was necessary for supplies to travel by water. It was estimated that a total of five divisional equivalent lifts were necessary for the logistics of the deployment of air divisions and air flotillas over the years 1941 to 1942. Additionally, there were smaller forces, such as Special Naval Landing Forces, SNLF, which were roughly equivalent to the size of a big battalion or a small regiment of infantry. These forces were sometimes supplied with anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank guns, and artillery fired from the coast. One or more Morris, as well as battleships, could be used for transportation by an SNLF unit. A cargo ship with a capacity of 7,024 tons, the Matsumoto Maru, transported the Cure First Special Naval Land Force from Paliliu to Legaspi in the Philippines. During its journey from Japan to Rabaul, the Cura 6 was transported by means of two extremely large cruisers. The largest Special Naval Land Force, SNLF, required sea lift at roughly 25% manpower of an Army Regimental Slice, regiment with conventional divisional field artillery, engineers, transport medical, etc. Three regimental slices were equivalent to a division because it was equipped with anti-aircraft and field artillery. A heavy SNLF was equivalent to a regimental slice of sea lift for its equipment. The minimal transportation capabilities of an SNLF were, however, overpowered by a regimental slice of trucks and tanks belonging to the Army. Consequently, an SNLF slice was approximately 20% of an Army regimental slice which is equivalent to approximately one fifteenth of a division in the event that sea lift was necessary. The 18 SNLFs and their equipment had moved or landed a total of 54 times by the time 1942 came to a close. According to the assessment, about three divisions worth of troops are estimated to be needed to move the SNLFs. Naval construction units were comparable to SNLS in terms of the number of personnel they employed and how they functioned as semi-military engineers. Despite the fact that they had some mechanical equipment, the majority of their workers were pick and shovel operators. Members of the cadre included both Japanese Navy officers and Japanese civilian engineers. In addition to constructing airfields, fortifications, and barracks, these heavy battalions also constructed other facilities. Using a regular Maris, they set sail across the Pacific Ocean. For the duration of 1942, their transportation could be equivalent to one or two division lifts. Quantifying the forces that are present at naval bases is hard. By garrisoning seized islands, ports, and airfields and defending them with artillery, seacoast guns, and anti-aircraft weapons, base troops were able to strengthen their defenses. Minesweepers and subchasers were among the light naval units that were used to protect the local seas. There were at least 53 naval base forces and special base forces that were under the administration of the Navy at one point or another. Base forces and special base forces differed greatly in terms of the number of soldiers and weaponry they included and their strength ranged from that of a battalion to that of a division. On December 8, 1941, these base troops were particularly powerful and light naval vessels. In the Marshall Islands, the 6th Base Force consisted of a minesweeper division, a gunboat division, four subchaser divisions, a variety of Maris, and a substantial amount of coast and anti-aircraft artillery. During the early stages of the war, a few light detachments from base troops moved in to invade minor islands. In the Marianas, for example, the 5th Defense Force, which was a regiment-sized formation that was subordinate to the 5th Base Force, 
established a special naval land force consisting of 400 men. On December 10, that group, along with units of the army, initiated an invasion of Guam. When the tide of the war began to turn against Japan, the base troops became extremely heavy in anti-aircraft guns and coast artillery, at the very least in terms of raw manpower and the number of artillery units. All of the base forces that the Japanese ever operated throughout World War II were equivalent to 11 or more army divisions. Base forces were comparable to army divisions in terms of their communications and medical support, but they were less capable of land mobility. Additionally, forces had significantly more artillery and construction engineering assistance. It was necessary to send all of these units in order to transport and maintain them. It is estimated that it took almost a quarter of a division to transport the approximately 2,500 soldiers of the 7th Naval Base Force and its logistics from Japan to Lai, New Guinea, by the month of June in 1942. Over the course of time, the transportation of 21,570 soldiers, along with their stores and equipment, was required in order to transport the huge 8th Base Force to Raval, New Britain. Coast defense and anti-aircraft guns were brought in by Naval Guard personnel, which were formed into formations ranging in strength from battalions to regiments for further protection. It is likely that a two-division lift effort was what was necessary for all of the Raval vessels. For the 13,000 soldiers and equipment of the 1st Base Force to be transported from Formosa and other locations to Bumen, which is located on the island of Bougainville, it most likely required the transportation of an entire division's worth of ships. With a total of 4,500 personnel stationed on New Ireland, the 14th Base Force undoubtedly required a lift that was around one-third of that of the 1st Base Force. For the establishment of port facilities, air bases, and fortifications at Singapore, Rangoon, Manila, Davao, Cebu, Tawi Tawi, and Batavia, to name only a few of the larger ports, a significant number of ships were necessary. It is likely that the Japanese naval base forces required the equivalent of 12 division lists throughout the years 1941 and 1942. These forces were transported by the Navy over a period of 13 months, not in a single massive lift. Regardless, it was necessary to send them in order to get them there, and it would be necessary to ship them in order to keep them alive. During the early stages of the conflict, the majority of distances were very short, which was a fortunate circumstance for the Japanese. Before the start of the war, Japan had successfully conducted a number of lengthy journeys to assembly centers. During the invasion of the Philippines, Formosa and the Palaus were used as staging territories. Hainan Island and French Indochina served as the staging grounds for Malaya. The journey from Rabaul to Guadalcanal in August of 1942 was relatively short, but contained a great deal of peril. As a result of the fact that some of Solomon's actions were carried out by barges or warships, they did not put a strain on mercantile operations. Given the short distance that separated Malaya and Sumatra, it was possible for native ships to transport a few of the soldiers. On the other hand, transporting the 1st, 6th, 7th, and 8th tank regiments from Burma, Malaya, Luzon, and Java, respectively, back, to Manchuria required long-distance journeys that required hold and deck room for the transportation of personnel, tanks, munitions, and spare parts. During the month of December 1941, the largest number of troops, unit flags, went by ship. This included six army divisions and 11 brigades and regiments, and some of these military units moved multiple times. Following that, these vessels returned for lifts in the months of January and February of 1942. During the month of January, three divisions were relocated, and during the month of February, five more divisions were moved. Two of them relocated in March, and one left in April. Between the months of May and August, only one division was transferred aboard a ship. In fact, that particular division 
the fourth, went back to Japan. Aside from the movement of 11 distinct brigades, regiments, or independent garrison units forward, and three backward during the months of May and August, the Army required shipping only for the purpose of providing supplies for ordinary operations. This turned out to be a fortunate circumstance, as Japan's economy was in dire need of ships to transport raw supplies from occupied regions to the home islands. The Navy followed a pattern that was very similar. During the first four months, there were significant lifts accomplished in order to relocate special naval landing forces, naval construction units, base forces, and air flotillas, and subsequently there was a decrease in deployment vessels. It didn't take long for a distinct lift curve to emerge. It was an upward sustenance curve of merchant and naval assets, which provided the deployed forces with the means to continue their operations. However, once these more advanced units came into contact with Allied counteroffensives, that curve began to climb upward. In a single massive endeavor, Japan expanded its territory by employing ships that were often used for commercial purposes. The method involved the transportation of the lift equivalent of more than 62 divisions. The manpower and equipment used in conflict were transported in a variety of vessels, including warships, Maris loaded with soldiers, and Maris laden with administrative supplies. In 1941, and for the majority of 1942, the military was successful in relocating both its personnel and its equipment. The planners were given a false sense of confidence over the nation's ability to deploy and maintain its armies as a result of these triumphs. In 1943, the United States submarines alone were responsible for the destruction of 335 Japanese warships and Maris, which weighed a combined total of 1.5 million tons. There were an additional million tons that went down due to various factors. Submariners from the United States were practicing their craft. All things considered, the Japanese merchant marine suffered a loss of 37% of its capacity as a consequence. When one takes into account the fact that this figure takes into account the manufacture of new shipping during the period, the significance of this number becomes more apparent. Five gross registered tons of shipping were sufficient for the Japanese to move one soldier in December of 1941. This was because the Japanese possessed sufficient shipping. By the end of 1943, space had become so tightly packed and a large number of ships had been brought back into service to support the war economy that each soldier could be transported by one gross ton. Ships were loaded to a level that exceeded the accepted safety limitations. Mechanical issues were experienced by overloaded ships. By the time December 1943 rolled around, the Japanese had packed five times as many soldiers and pieces of equipment into each transport as they did with each transport in 1941. On the decks of cargo ships and among the troops, longshoremen stacked filled oil and gasoline drums until they were completely full. When army divisions relocated, they left behind an increasing amount of unit equipment. In the month of January, four infantry divisions moved, and in the month of March, two divisions set sail. During the remaining months of 1943, an average of one division moved every month. Around the course of the year, 12 divisions, flags, made 15 moves. Rather than being tactical maneuvers, the majority of these were long-distance maneuvers and thus required a significant investment of both ships and time. The maximum distance that a person could sail while still remaining within the empire was six moves. There were only two moves that were too short. The movement of two army air divisions took place in three short lifts. The movement of a light division comparable to an SNLF took place in 14 lifts of battalion size, and the movement of the equivalent of 18 independent brigades, independent regiments, or divisional regiments took place in 21 lifts. The Japanese had obviously positioned a lot of troops where they wanted them in 1942, and they did not need to transfer huge numbers of units in 1943. 
This is in contrast to the moves that they made in 1941 and during the second half of 1942. At the naval base, for example, there were a significant number of forces present. In spite of the fact that these base forces required recipe and that some of them were given reinforcements, they did not require the more logistically challenging emplacement installation. Due to the fact that transportation shortages and losses had grown so serious, and that merchantmen were in such a precarious position, Japanese aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and auxiliaries began transporting Navy logistics as well as Army personnel and supplies. Prior to Guadalcanal, the Navy had not made any attempts to accomplish this on a regular basis. There is little doubt that the utilization of battleships reduced vulnerability due to the fact that they were swift, nimble, and equipped with powerful anti-aircraft defenses. This use, on the other hand, placed a strain on vessels that were not designed specifically for this function. The cost of fuel oil was also not cost-effective. However, it was a successful endeavor. During the year 1943, cruisers participated in 86 logistics missions. This was due to the fact that Japan's aerial situation was deteriorating and that slow Maris were becoming more susceptible to attack by aircraft and submarines. In spite of the fact that some cruisers were damaged, there were no casualties sustained while transporting troops or equipment. Additionally, destroyers experienced an increase in their dedication to organizing logistics lists. For the purpose of making logistical runs, Battleships collaborated with fleet, light, and escort carriers. Despite the fact that supply requirements for advanced forces continued to climb without interruption, for every single sailor and every single soldier who was sent to the Gilberts or Marshalls or to Java or Burma, the military required shipping in order to transport the armaments and food that were required for that particular individual. Due to the fact that the roughly 20,000 sailors who were stationed in the Gilberts and Marshalls were unable to survive off the land, it was necessary to make multiple supply missions. The greater the strength of such a force, the greater the amount of resources it utilizes. During the year 1944, the Army moved more forces by sea than it had accomplished since the beginning of the conflict. Nine air divisions or air flotillas, 11 lifts, four division equivalents in expeditionary units, and approximately 41 independent mixed brigades, tank regiments, detached divisional regiments, and independent regiments, 50 lifts, were among the units that Japan attempted to relocate. Some of these divisions were moved in more than one lift, resulting in a total of 32 division lifts. Additionally, the non-divisional logistics tails for the combat elements and the minor artillery that was not part of the division have sailed. To give one example, three naval construction units set sail for the islands of Guam and Tinian. During the year 1944, a staggering 1.8 million men were transported by water, and 83,293 of them lost their lives. This is equivalent to six to seven divisions. Similar to the situation in 1943, the Japanese Navy utilized its fighting vessels in order to supply swift lift assets. In the course of ordinary ship deployments from one port to another, the Navy made space available for aircraft carriers, battleships, and cruisers. A battalion of the Army and a Special Naval Land Force, SNLF, were carried onto the super battleship Musashi in February along with weapons, gasoline, food, and vehicles. During the course of the mission, the crew secured oil and fuel amidships, secured explosives to the deck in front of the forward turrets, and secured trucks behind the ship. In order to reach Palau, Musashi, and three destroyers set off. On February 29, the ships arrived in Palau without any damage despite the fact that a hurricane washed the majority of the munitions deck cargo overboard. The Jolo Force, which was a detachment from the 56th Brigade and embarked in 1941, has a somewhat larger soldier load than Musashi does, yet there is only a little correlation between the two. 
On the other hand, a comparison is fascinating. With a total of 52,467 tons of cargo, the Jolo invading force consisted of 4,000 troops and sailed in nine maras. In the year 1941, the Japanese possessed adequate lift and a tactical environment that was sufficiently benign to allow them to move soldiers in conventional maras. Both were absent by the year 1944. It is estimated that around 2,000 men embarked on the Musashi. At the beginning of March 1944, a task group that was constructed around the aircraft carrier Zukaku embarked on a departure from Japan. This group was loaded with men, including supplies. Both the battleships Congo and Haruna were able to successfully bring men aboard, while the crew of the heavy cruiser Mogami was able to successfully bring supplies to the army. After that, the heavy cruiser Maya and the super battleship Yamato loaded up with military personnel and equipment in preparation for a deployment to Manila, which is located in the Philippines. Despite the fact that the Yamato was employed in a redeployment for tactical reasons, the majority of these cruisers were tasked with the sole responsibility of transporting personnel and equipment. Late in the month of June, Japan was the location where the largest logistics lift of the war, which was to be transported on warships, was assembled. There were no slow Maris involved in this massive fleet endeavor. Rather, only the most capable and fastest members of Japan's Navy participated. First and foremost, speed and maneuverability were highly valued. When two heavy cruisers departed Japan on July 1 in the direction of Manila, they laid the groundwork for the journey. Both ships were carrying soldiers from the Army. A regiment of the 28th Division was among the items of equipment that were brought aboard the battleship Nagato. The Congo, a battleship, took on both soldiers and supplies. In addition to more than double the number of men that the ship was designed to accommodate, the Yamato was occupied by an entire regiment. The crew of the 4th battleship in this fleet the Musashi, led the men and equipment into the temporary quarters to which they were transported. The troops and equipment were transported on board ten ships. The force, which had departed the home islands on July 8 and had dropped off men at both Okinawa and Manila before embarking on a journey south with the remaining troops and equipment, was comprised of seven destroyers. The 14th of July saw the departure of three further cruisers from Japan, carrying reinforcements and supplies for Okinawa. There were 62 lift missions carried out by heavy, light, and training cruisers. In 1944, air base supplies, torpedoes, ammunition, anti-aircraft units, army troops, and Navy ground and air personnel were all transported by cruisers en route to their destinations. There were only four light cruisers that were lost during the logistical runs that took place in 1944. Three of these cruisers had already unloaded their personnel and were leaving the region. The losses are equivalent to a 7% rate in lift assets and just 2% in cargo, which is quite good for a situation in which it has been demonstrated that moving soldiers in slower ships can be catastrophic. When their ground forces were outnumbered and under attack throughout the conflict, the Japanese answer was to bring in additional men and to virtually ignore logistics. This method was used throughout the war. In Shanghai, a big troop convoy was prepared with the intention of traveling to New Guinea. The 32nd Division dispatched a total of 12,874 soldiers by four Maris. 8,170 troops from the 35th Division marched onto another four Maris. Eight of the 15 Maris that left Shanghai on April 17 were carrying the two divisions. There were 15 Maris of great size. It is necessary to make a quick comparison of the tonnage. It was in January of 1943 when the United States Navy transported the 20th Division from Korea to New Guinea using a total of 81,254 gross and displacement tons of transport, which consisted of nine Maris and two light cruiser transports. After that, 
the Navy raised the 17th Division by using seven large Morris, one naval auxiliary, and four light cruiser sorties between the months of September and October of 1943. There was a total of 91,073 tons of gross registered tonnage added to the cruiser displacement. In April of 1944, the United States Navy was hoisting the majority of two divisions with eight Maris and no cruisers for convoy Bamboo No, one that was departing from Shanghai. The total gross weight of the consignment was just 45,687 tons. Overcrowding in 1944 was four times worse than it was in 1943, and the fact that it was so bad was a recipe for disaster. The fact that the divisions were relatively light was one of the reasons that eight Maris were able to carry two divisions. There was a shortage of significant logistics tales among Japanese units. Within the context of this scenario, lightness extended even into elements of warfare. At the time of the battle in Shanghai, the 35th Division had just two infantry regiments, the 220th and the 221st. The headquarters of the division, as well as the 219th Infantry Regiment, were not a part of this convoy at the time because they were located in Japan. This was regarded as a significant development by the Japanese. They dispatched a rear admiral and the 6th Escort convoy, which included a minlayer, three destroyers, three frigate-type escorts, one minesweeper, two subchasers, and three gunboats. In addition, they assigned a minlayer. Despite the presence of 13 escorts, a submarine from the United States struck Yoshida Maru no. One, which weighed 5,425 tons and drowned an entire army regiment of 3,189 soldiers from the 32nd Division. A total of five escorts were removed from the convoy after it arrived in Manila Bay on April 29. Six Maris that were headed to Manila were dropped off. In the morning of May 1st, the convoy left Manila. Due to the fact that Tokyo was concerned about the possibility of air assaults if the ships continued to cruise further to the southeast, they decided to go for Halmahera Island rather than New Guinea. Three of the eight transports were also struck by a second submarine. Long enough for the majority of the soldiers to disembark from the ships, they remained afloat. Until that point, the Aden Maru, an elderly transport vessel that weighed 5,860 tons, had been a fortunate vessel. She was able to avoid being hit by a torpedo and escape a hit from a dud bomb. She had also participated in multiple landings. When the Maru went down, she was carrying 2,410 men from the 35th Division, and 700 of them were killed in the accident. In addition to the loss of a battalion of troops, two further battalions were submerged in water and became survivors rather than armed combat formations following their immersion. At a weight of 6,995 tons, the Taijima Maru sank, a brand new cargo ship called the Amatusen Maru, which weighed 6,886 tons and was traveling on her first trip, went down. Despite successfully bringing down 14 howitzers, the Amatusen Maru claimed the lives of 95 of the 3,420 troops aboard the 35th Division. During this convoy, the 35th Division, which consisted of two infantry regiments and an artillery regiment, suffered the loss of at least one battalion's worth of infantrymen, all but one battery of artillery, and the equipment for two infantry regiments. It would have been impossible for the Japanese to carry 28 divisions, four division equivalents, and 41 brigade equivalents if they had operated with the usual supply and combat support tails that are standard in Western forces. Under no circumstances could they have relocated the corps and army personnel, as per Western standards. Even Japan's battlefield divisions were relatively small. Activated in China in 1943 and then sent to Okinawa in 1944, 
the 62nd Division lacked an organic artillery unit and had an extremely limited number of engineers, signalmen, and trucks available. A total of 650,000 tons of ships were utilized by the Army in 1941 in order to transport two combat-loaded reinforced divisions to the Philippines. The Army also utilized 710,000 tons to transport three combat-loaded reinforced divisions into Malaya. The Army calculated that they would require 1.5 million tons of material for the 12 divisions they anticipated would be necessary for the invasion of Australia in 1942. In February of 1942, the Japanese had assigned 38 Maris to the task of transporting the 48th Division, which had been reinforced, away from Luzon in preparation for an amphibious landing on Java. The Christmas Island seizure force during the month of March 1942 consisted of two Maris of medium size, carrying a total of only 850 men. The Midway Transport Group, which was formed in June 1942, was able to transport just 2,450 infantry units from the Army and Navy, as well as two naval construction units, despite having 100,000 tons of cargo ships, transports, and destroyer transports. In 1944, 40,000 men would have been able to fit themselves into Midway's 100,000 tons. The Army planned its movements for 1944 based on a merchant fleet that had decreased from its level of 6.1 million tons in 1941 to a total of around 3.8 million tons in January 1944. This figure would continue to decrease progressively throughout the year. It is true that administratively loaded forces required a significantly lower weight than troops that were ready for an invasion and were laden with combat duty. In addition, it is true that deployments in 1944 would often last for a period of 12 months, as opposed to the single month of December in 1941. This would make it possible to utilize the same ships several times, or until they were sunk, whichever came first. However, the enemy's threat was significantly more hazardous and the distances were significantly greater in 1944 compared to 1941. Despite everything, the Army was successful. In the absence of appropriate anti-submarine technology, the Japanese pushed men into the Mariana Islands, the Philippines, Formosa, and Okinawa by using physical force. The Japanese took this action due to their lack of access to current technology. It did not matter how many people were killed or injured because the military's sole remaining resource was raw manpower. Moreover, the military squandered it in a careless and dangerous manner. Relocating the military members resulted in a significant loss of both personnel and equipment. 